For a miracle. For power manifestation. Tonight is a special night for you. And the Lord will satisfy everyone. Even tonight. In Jesus name. For us here at the Alpha location. Something great. Unprecedented. Is coming your way. Online. I'm here just for you. That God will wipe away all your tears. Take away all your sorrow. And crush every sickness out of your life. Here and there tonight. Something great is happening. Let me see your hand. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. You are the God that cannot fail. Your power cannot fail. I pray that tonight, great, wonderful, marvelous things will happen in everyone's life in Jesus' name. Why all the tears away? Change everything changeable. Lord, I pray the impossible will be possible tonight. Incredible miracles. Supernatural deliverance coming upon everyone tonight. Confirm it, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. I just like to hear your voice again. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, we come back to Matthew chapter 6. And tonight, we're looking at verse 10. Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. When there is a kingdom, there is a king. And the attributes of the king will pass on to the kingdom. The king, the kingdom of power. The kingdom, the kingdom of power. The king is the king of majesty. And the kingdom, the majestic kingdom. The king is an unfailing king. And the kingdom is a kingdom that cannot fail. The king is the all in all. And the kingdom has all that you need. Tonight, it will satisfy you with all that you need in Jesus' name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. Look, look at verse 33 there. Verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Great blessings from heaven. Added to your life tonight. Great manifestation of power. Manifested in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things, all things, all these things shall be added unto you. Today, there's addition in your life. You know, sometimes when I say, you want to come to Christ? Raise up your hand there. Some people, they don't understand. They think if they raise up their hands, if they give themselves to Christ, that something will be subtracted out of their lives. Uh -uh. You miss the point. Addition is coming. Multiplication is coming. When you seek the king, and you seek the kingdom, and you seek the righteousness of the king and of the kingdom. 
addition of blessing, addition of benefits, addition of goodness, addition of miracle, addition of supernatural wonders, addition of supernatural deliverance will come your way in Jesus' name. Now, there are some people that think all that kind of raise up your hand, believe on the Lord Jesus. They say it's for young people. Uh -huh. You didn't get the point. Everyone that wants addition, addition of blessing, addition of miracle, addition of salvation, addition of the good things of heaven is meant for everyone. It's not only children. It's not only teenagers. It's not only middle-aged people. Even the people that are old and old and old, they need addition in their life. And I come to you tonight to invite you to the addition of the kingdom in your life tonight in Jesus' name. You know, some people say, I go to church, I'm a church man, I'm a church woman. And so, when I say, if you want the salvation of the Lord, the forgiveness of the Lord, where are you there? Left, right, center, at the back, very quickly, raise up your hand. They say, I go to church already. Ah, you missed the point. All the people that want addition in their lives. Church man, don't you want addition? Church woman, don't you want addition? Everyone, no matter where you are, and no matter where you are coming from, and no matter the goodness that you have had in the past, I come to you tonight to bring addition of heaven into your life. Somebody help me shout addition. So when the time comes, I will give you a chance that additional blessing additional glory additional grace additional salvation that the lord will put in your life that addition will come to you today and uh, online french listen the time i give the altar call it's not the time for you to say because you are in the privacy of your house there i go to toilet i go to kitchen i open the fridge i want to get something to shop when addition is about to come stay there and the blessing of god will come upon your life tonight i'm talking to you on extraordinary blessings for kingdom citizens extraordinary what's going to happen to you tonight extraordinary what's going to come in your life tonight extraordinary somebody there help me shout extraordinary extraordinary blessings for kingdom citizens there are three points i'm looking at number one the natural birth number two the new birth number three the numberless birthright number one the natural birth into an earthly kingdom when you were born natural birth you were born into an earthly kingdom and in the earthly kingdom quite a lot of heavy heavy metallic things evil happen in the earthly kingdom and when you have the natural birth it's the natural birth into an earthly kingdom number two the new birth into the eternal kingdom when you understand that the natural birth the one you see date of birth that you only came into an earthly natural situation but then if things are going to change if the mark of heaven is going to be upon your life there must be a new birth the new birth into the eternal kingdom number three then the numberless uncountable birthrights 
in Emmanuel's kingdom. When you come in, and you can come in at any stage, you can come in as a young person, you will. As a middle-aged person, you will. As an old-aged person, you will. And then, numberless birthrights will come to you from Emmanuel's kingdom. Let's come to number one. Number one, the natural birth into an earthly kingdom. Look at Job there, chapter 14, verse 1. Job chapter 14, verse 1. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. That's the natural birth. You're born by a woman, of course. A man, a woman, boy, girl, anyone born of a woman. It's of a few days, and those few days are full of trouble. Look at verse 4 there. In verse 4, it says, Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? No one. What's that saying? Adam and Eve, by their sin, by their fall, they became unclean. Daddy unclean. Mommy unclean. They came together and then they brought out number one, Cain. And Cain was that murderer. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? No one. You see, all the families on earth, all the men, all the women on earth, all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. Everyone on earth, every father on earth, every mother on earth fell short of the glory of God. And so their offspring, the people, the boys, the girls, the men, the women, the citizens, the people that they brought into the world, into the earthly kingdom, they were also unclean. Who can bring a clean man, a clean woman, a righteous man, a righteous woman, a pure man, a pure woman? Who can bring a perfect man, a perfect woman out of an unclean source, no one. That's why we're told in uh, Psalm 58. Psalm 58, I'm reading from verse 3. It says, the wicked are estranged from the womb. The wicked are estranged from the womb. You know, our psychologists, our scientists, our college people, our people that propound theory and theory and theory, they say it's the environment that corrupts us. They say it is the action of other people that corrupt us. They say normally everyone, every boy, every girl is an innocent person. They say it is when the environment interacts with them, interplays with them, that they have a problem. That's what they say, but they know it's not right. The wicked are estranged from the womb. Before the environmental influence on anyone, and before the influence of society on anyone, he himself is bad enough. Look at this. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Before a child knows any other one that ever told a lie, that child by himself, by herself, will be telling lies. Before a child sees anyone pretending, 
And the one hypocritical, that child himself, herself, plays hide and seek. And plays the hypocrite. It is not any other person teaching the fellow. It comes from the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born. Speaking lies. In Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 3. Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 3, it says, Among whom also we all, no exception, everyone, somebody high, somebody low, somebody in Africa, somebody in America, somebody in Asia, somebody in Europe, everywhere. It says, among whom also we all had a conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh. That's the problem. We're born into an earthly kingdom. And that earthly kingdom is corrupt, is sinful, is bad, is evil. We ourselves were evil and sinful by nature. And then our neighbors also, they're sinful and evil. The nature and the neighbors, they come together and now evil by character, bad character multiplies. And it is the lost in our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh. Not environment, not because other people influenced us after all. No other person's character can force you. If you yourself, if you are not evil now, when a dog barks, that doesn't influence you. Don't bark like the dog. Why not? Because you don't want to. Because that nature is not in you. And when we call them nocturnal creatures, Cockroach. When they move the way they move, you don't copy them. Why? Because that nature is not in you. When a bad person is doing something, it's the connection with the bad nature in you that makes you to do what you do. That's why he said, among whom also we all had a conversation in times past in the laws of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we were by nature, not by influence, by nature, not by the environment. We were by nature, the children of wrath, even as others. That's a problem. We were born into an earthly kingdom, and we want a change, you will remember. When you've done something bad and they caught you and they said, this one, you cannot deny, you did this one. And then they brought you to an open shame. And then you told yourself, never, I will never do that again. You make resolution and you say, I resolve. I will never do this kind of thing again after a few days you are back to that naughty thing, evil thing, bad character. Why? Your nature. By nature, it's like a fish saying, I vow I will never swim again. That fish cannot fulfill that vow. Why? By nature, that fish will swim. It's like a bird making a vow, resolution. This new year, I make resolution. I will not fly again. That bird cannot fulfill that. Why? The nature. The same thing. The person who has the nature of evil, 
the nature of sinfulness you cannot say i vow i resolve i decide by myself i will never do that again my friend you will do it again why that is your nature because we are born into the earthly kingdom but there's another kind of birth you will be born again i didn't hear your answer yeah. i said you'll be born again yeah. and when that new birth comes a new nature a new life a new character a new behavior everything in your life everything will turn the right side up it can happen tonight it will happen tonight where are you it's coming your way i said where are you it's up that time we need that new but that leads me to point number two point number two the new birth into the eternal kingdom there's a difference between the earthly kingdom and the eternal kingdom the eternal kingdom is the heavenly kingdom the eternal kingdom is the kingdom of god himself and his nature rules and reigns in the eternal kingdom that's why tonight I want to extend the favor of God unto you. That you have been in the dark, sinful, evil, earthly kingdom. I extend the favor of God to you tonight. You will come into the eternal kingdom. Amen. Amen. You are coming. And when you come, your life will change. Your nature will change. Impossibilities will become possible in your life in Jesus' name. Look at John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. The eternal kingdom takes a new birth. And when you are born afresh, born anew, born from above, born by God, a new life, a new nature, a new character because it says that must happen if you are going to see the kingdom of god look at verse 5 in verse 5 jesus answered verily verily i say unto thee except a man of course a woman a boy a girl a person, anyone, everyone, except a man be born of water and of the spirit. Not just water, of water and the spirit. But now you need to understand the language of Jesus. Because you know, every time you hear water, you are thinking of the water that comes from the river. You want to go to River Jordan and take some water there and bath. Ask those who have gone to River Jordan, River Jerusalem, River Red Sea, River Holy Water. And they have taken that River Holy Water and the bath. It's only their skin that was affected. It didn't affect their heart, their character, their soul, their mind. There was no change. The water is referring to here is the water Jesus spoke about to the woman at the well. When he said, if you drink this water that you have come to draw from the well, 
you will search again. The things that you have been doing, man number one, not man number two, man number three, and you are going from place to place, you will search for that again. The works of the flesh and the desires of the flesh that have been there or the desire for alcohol or the desire for marijuana or the desire for any evil thing if you drink this water whether it's coming from jerusalem or coming from bethel or coming from bethlehem or coming from uh, syca anywhere it comes from you will thirst again but the water that i will give you that's the water coming up from heaven that's the living water the water of life the word of the living god that will enter you and penetrate you you will not thirst anymore all those things who are thirsty of i want this i want that the lord will use the water of the word everything will vanish away Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, giving birth to you and saying, now, you have been in the earthly kingdom, but now a new birth, a spiritual birth, a birth that is done by the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. And when that birth takes place, you are born again. Your heart will be fresh. Your mind will be fresh. Your outlook will be fresh. You'll say, the things I used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to love, I love them no more. The nightclub that attracted me, no attraction for me anymore. Things are new and different now since I became born again. Tonight is your night. Online friend, God bless you. Thank you for staying there. Thank you for abiding there. It's going to happen to you tonight. That new birth. That new name, that new nature will come upon you tonight in Jesus' name. As the Lord is walking here, over there, over there, everywhere, the Lord will walk in your heart. Because it is only then born of water, the water that comes only from Christ. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And, the, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life. You know, it's not the water from the river. The water of life freely is coming upon your life tonight. And you will enter the kingdom of heaven. I said you'll enter the kingdom of heaven. Look at First Peter chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 23 there. Born anew. The new birth into the eternal kingdom. First Peter chapter 1 verse 23. Being born again. You understand? When we say again, that means... Something that happened before, the first time. That's the natural birth. But now being born again. This is the new birth. Not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Born afresh. Born anew by the word of God. That's the water there. That's the water there. Which liveth and abideth forever. That means being born again did not stop at the time of Nicodemus. 
being born again did not stop in the acts of the apostles being born again did not stop in the early century it says the word that gets us born again liveth and abideth forever available today it's coming today I can picture your life. Your life will be brand new life. Yeah. I can picture your parents. Anyone that saw you yesterday, when they see you tomorrow, they say, what happened to you? Even your look is new. Your life is new. Your language is new. Your carriage, everything is new from tonight. Because we're born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god which liveth and abideth forever are you there i said are you there how 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 will that Happen. Look at verse 18 in that chapter 1 of 1 Peter. In verse 18, for as much as you know that she was not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, you cannot be born again by silver and gold. Understand me, friend, church man, church woman. I go to church, I do too, and then I pay money, I give money, that's good. The church needs the money to build good church building and put roof on the building so that if we're worshiping and it's raining, we'll be under shelter, that's good. But the silver and the gold, the money and the contribution cannot change your heart, cannot change your life, cannot make you to be born anew. Look at this for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Look at verse 19. It says, but with the precious blood of Christ. That's how we're born again. With the precious blood of Christ. That's how we're cleansed. That's how we're washed. If you walk in the light as he is in the light. It says we have fellowship with the Father and the Son. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us. Purges us, beautifies us, and removes all those infirmities and evil things. We are cleansed with the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, without blemish and without spot. This is going to be that night, Amen. your own night. Amen. Say, my own night. Amen. When heaven will touch your life. And when the blood of Jesus will wash you whiter than snow. Look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 1. Wherefore laying aside all malice. Laying aside. You understand that? In the morning, you wake up in the natural. And then you remove the old clothes. And you take a good wash. And when you take a good wash, after that washing, you don't put on the old clothes anymore. But you dress new. That's what the Lord is saying spiritually. The old clothes clothes garment of malice of guile of hypocrisy of deception of lying of envy 
of jealousy and all evil speaking lay them aside as you come to the lord tonight you say lord i come what have you come for i want this new birth i want this new life i want this new character all right it will be done i said it will be done but you'll do one thing you lay aside all malice now how do I lay something aside? When I've been doing something and the thing you know, did not prosper me. I've been doing something you know, and the thing you know, did not help my progress. I've been doing something and the thing did not help my relationship with my wife. I've been doing something and the thing did not make me to enjoy my husband. I've been doing something and the thing did not give me a straight, continuous, gradual, happy, healthy, beautiful life. I say enough is enough. Somebody there, enough is enough. Enough is enough. That thing you know, that you've been doing, you know, when you keep malice, the other people too will keep malice with you. When you don't wear a smile, nobody will also smile at you. When you have hatred, and when you have bad, bad, injurious character everybody will be after you that thing does not pay it does not help it's getting us a life that is not happy a sorrowful life if you're a fighting man every day you'll find a fighter and some of them are more clever than you are that thing doesn't pay if what i have been doing the malice, the guile, the hypocrisies, the envies, the evil speaking. If they didn't pay me, I will lay them aside. That's what you do tonight. I'm talking to you. I say that is what you do tonight. And then look at verse 2 there. In verse 2, as newborn babes. As newborn babes, when you lay all those things aside, you'll be born afresh. New life, new birth, new character, new enjoyment. Because now you'll be born into the kingdom of God. New birth into the eternal kingdom. I come to point number three now. Point number three. The numberless birthrights in Emmanuel's kingdom. The numberless, the uncountable, the innumerable, the so many benefits and advantages of the new birth as we come into Emmanuel's kingdom. You will not remain in the evil kingdom. You will not remain in the dark kingdom. Give me good, better, amen. You will not remain in an occultic kingdom. You will not remain in an idolatrous kingdom. Those are the earthly kingdoms. They hurt people. They harm people. They injure people. They destroy people. And they turn people's lives upside down. Your life will not remain upside down. Your life will come right side up. My life will come right side up. Confirmed in Jesus' name. Now, what are the birthrights? What are the privileges? What are the blessings? What are the benefits of the birthright that we have as we come to the Lord? 
numberless birthrights in Emmanuel's kingdom. Look at Colossians chapter 1, reading from verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Giving thanks unto the Father because it's made us partakers. You will not be an onlooker. Amen. You will not be a spectator. Amen. As you come tonight, you will possess. Amen. I will possess. You will be a partaker of the inheritance of the saints in light. Look at verse 13. There's something here. Verse 13. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness? Who has delivered us from the power of darkness? It's when you come to the Lord. It's when you have the new birth. Different from the natural birth is then he will deliver you from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. The dear son is called Emmanuel. That's why we say this is the benefit, the birthright, numberless. For those who come to Emmanuel's kingdom. And now it says, it will deliver you from the power of darkness. Give me another good amen. amen. Now, when somebody says that this restaurant is very good. You say, how do you know? Is it because of the sign what they put there? Good restaurant? You say no. That, that's where I eat. Look at me. And the evidence that that thing I'm recommending to you is good is that you can see it on me. Since I started with the menu of that restaurant. All that I suffered before, the early morning blue, and all those things, everything vanished away, and I cannot exchange that restaurant for any other. That recommendation is coming from something practical. The same thing when you come to Emmanuel's kingdom. I can tell you what happens in Emmanuel's kingdom. Every power of darkness in your life will be cancelled in Jesus name I know you take my word for it but let me show you others that have got into that kingdom and then they add this translation from the kingdom of darkness kingdom of evil and they came to Emmanuel's kingdom. And since that time, things have been for the better in their lives. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. Can I show you who they are? Amen. Let me bring uh, this man that was totally healed of prostate cancer. As the GCK in a um, river stage took place and it was there just like you are here tonight hey, let's listen to them let the man come and tell us what happened when he connected like you are connecting tonight for five years plus now I've been carrying a dreadful disease called prostate cancer. This makes me not to associate myself with friends whenever I'm outing because of the odor I carried. I smell a lot because of this constant urine. The moment 
I want to urinate and I don't have the, uh, the opportunity to do that. I will lose control and I will pass the urine just like that. And this makes me to smell whenever I pass in the midst of people. So, but glory be to God for what he has done for me through July edition of the Global Crusade at Calabar. The man of God prayed. After the prayer, he asked us to raise up our hands and place our hands where we have the challenge. This I did. After that prayer, I felt, a, 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 in fact, I felt something in my private part, a kind of cool sensation. And I knew that something was happening. So after the prayer, I went home. Before this time, I will not drink water whenever I eat from 7 o'clock till that late in the night. But after this prayer, after the miracle, I can eat freely, I can drink freely. Before this time, in a single night, I can go to pee more than seven times, ten times. Just like that, frequently like that, every day. And this used to disturb me. And what they said was that I have to go for operation. And here am I. No money for operation, but God for the intervention of the global crusade. God used his servants, Dr. Pastor W.F. Kumi, to bring healing upon me. And now I am free. No operation, no spending of money. If I want to go to urinate, I can urinate at will. I can hold myself if the place is not conducive for me. I can hold myself until when I get home before I go to pee. So I thank God for what he has done for me. If not for the global crusade, where will I have money to go for uh, operation? If not for the global crusade, I wouldn't have got this feeling. But I thank God that he has touched my life. And since that time till today, my life has changed. I am a different person. I can associate with my friends without fear. I can move without somebody hearing any bad order from me. Amen. He got it, you will get it. He said, now things are different. And for you tonight, Things are different. As the Lord does it for men, He does it also for women. There's no discrimination. You've heard a man. Let me bring to you a woman, an elderly sister, Mama, actually. She had been paralyzed. For six years. Don't let me tell you her story. She will tell you her story by herself. Mama, welcome. Tell us your story. I lived in Irewale, Shaki Oyo State. For the past six years now, I I was unable to work on myself. They, they were carrying me uh, here and there. But I had last month I heard of my crusade, which was to take place at Bayesa State by um, Pastor Kumuyi. And they, um, our pastor brought um, satellites to my house, so I watched. Amen. 
on the third day, at the last amen on that third day, I was able to walk after the prayer of man of God, the final amen that I said. The Amen. For you, amen. amen. Online, amen is coming your way. Amen. Online people shout. Amen. Amen. And then uh, here, Quara people. Amen in your life. Amen, Amen uh, in your family. Amen. See what happens in Emmanuel's kingdom was delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Look at verse 14 there. In verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. All your sins are forgiven tonight. That's why you are going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice with you. I will hear your testimony. Psalm 103, I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 103, verse 1. Here it tells us, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Look at verse 2. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Verse 3 now, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. He's waiting for you tonight. All your iniquities, all your sins, every bad thing you have done because of the natural birth in the earthly kingdom. Your nature, your life, your behavior, your character, every evil sin that Lord will forgive you tonight. Did you hear? Forgiveness from heaven. Did you hear? Forgiveness from the Father. Did you hear? Forgiveness with total freedom. Congratulations. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Look at the second part. Who healeth all thy diseases. How many of your diseases will he heal tonight? <laughs> Blind eyes will open. The lame will rise up and walk. And those who are infirm, impotent, and weak, and some parts of the body have died off and could not function again. New life. Dynamic life. Healthy life will come to you tonight in Jesus' name. Tumor will vanish away from your body. And all those evil things that make you less than a complete human being, everything will be taken away tonight. Bless the Lord, O my soul, who forgiveth all thine iniquities and healeth all thy diseases your night has come your chance has come two things number one he forgives all your iniquities number two he heals all your diseases let's have number one eyes closed and heads bowed the lord was to take you out of the earthly kingdom and he wants to bring you to the eternal kingdom 
ex bowed, eyes closed. You want that translation. You want that transfer. You want the Lord Himself to give you the new birth right now beyond the natural birth. Wherever you are, I know you've been waiting for this time. Raise up your hand. God bless you there. God bless you. God bless you. There's a new birth tonight. There's a new life tonight. All your sins will be forgiven. Online, friend, you know I'm talking to you. And you know that this is your time for you to have this new birth. And wherever you are over there, in any country, in any congregation, anywhere you are, raise up your hand right there. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now, everyone, as you are raising up your hand, I want you to stand up. Stand up wherever you are. You say, to forgive all my sins, to change my life, and to give me a new birth. I want it now. Raise up your hand. Remember, it's for the young, it's for the old, it's for everyone. God bless you. We're going to pray now. And in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, the Lord will give you that new birth. Amen. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for all those who have indicated that they want to move out of the natural birth into the new birth. They want to move away from the earthly kingdom to the eternal kingdom. I pray, Lord, according to your promise, forgive them in Jesus' name. Cleanse their hearts now and transfer them and translate them to the kingdom of of your only begotten son and let that change and transformation that new life and new character be for them now visible known in jesus name thank you lord for the answer in jesus name i pray it is done i said it is done Keep on standing and you will give response to the counselors who are there. We want our overseer to take over now as we do this thoroughly and yet briefly. Then I'll come back. He forgives all your sins. He will heal all your diseases. Uh, counselors should go right now and assist the people who have just taken the decision that heaven has sanctioned already. Your name is already written in the book of life. See our counselors, give them your name and your phone number that we must assist you more and more. Let our counselors go towards the park and assist the people. Let's spread ourselves out and cover everywhere. If you are watching online, and you just gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message tonight, visit the link showing on the screen. Click it, fill the form there, and then return it so that you can be at 60. Let's go around and do that very quickly. Let's assist our people to fill the form. If I've just given your life to Christ, don't sit down. Allow the counselors to see you. 
You can stand up where you are. Let them see you. All things have become new in your life. You are no more the old man, the old woman anymore. Also, if you are listening via the radio or television, and you just gave your life to Christ, send your name, your phone number, and your location address via SMS or through what was up to the number going on on the screen right now. The number is plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. Listen again. The number is plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three for all those who have given their lives to Christ right at the Alpha location here there will be a special online backwards for all those watching online who gave their lives to Christ on Sunday 3rd July 2022. More details about this will be sent to you. And our pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet. You must not miss it. For both of us here and those on online as well. The Quara Banquet, the Believer's Banquet on Sunday, 3rd July. It's going to be at the various region headquarters. And the time of the banquet is 2 p.m. You must be there. Jesus is waiting for you. He has a lot of blessings for you. You will not miss it. A counselor should hurry up. Tonight is a night of your miracle. Signs and wonders. Three in one tonight. You will have the blessings coming right way to your own life. Let's keep on praying. If you expect a miracle of the Lord, you can't miss it tonight. You cannot miss that miracle. God has forgiven your iniquities. That's stage number one. Stage number two is the healing that is coming up very soon. And for all those new converts that is launched out tomorrow, 3 p.m. at the Alpha location here in Hall 5. Don't miss it. Be there. Launch R with Jesus. 3 p.m. Right inside the compound here in Hall 5. Cancel us if you are finished. From my right hand side, can you wave your flag and let me see you? If you are finished, wave the flag. God bless you. At the middle, have you finished? If you are finished, wave your flag. Let me see you at the middle. launch our fellowship tomorrow is at the campus hall. Note that if I finish taking the record at the middle, can you wave your flag and let me see you? 
to my left hand side. God bless you. I can see that in the front. All right. Get ready. Let's rise up anywhere you are. We are waiting for our Father in the Lord. And your miracle is coming on your way. As we invite our Father to the podium again. Your miracle is awaiting you. I said it's coming. Yeah. Your miracle. Yeah. My miracle. Yeah. Awaiting me. Yeah. Now, you've seen what happened to other people. At the time of the final amen, they believed, they accepted, and they did what they couldn't do before. The same thing you must do. Once we pray to the Heavenly Father, He always answers. He will answer for you tonight. And then at the end of the final amen, you check up yourself and you do what you couldn't do before. You'll find our God is there right by your side. Are you ready for the miracle? Ready for the healing? Raise up the hand and lift the other hand where the challenge is. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. We know with you all things are possible. You have promised us you will transfer everyone out of the kingdom of darkness Kingdom of disease, kingdom of sickness, kingdom of infirmity, and you will translate everyone to the kingdom of health, of healing, of deliverance, of power, of newness of life. Lord, do as you have said. Touch everyone now. The blind, the dumb, the deaf, the lame, the one having paralysis, having stroke, having cancer, having tuberculosis, having any problem, any disease. Touch, heal everyone now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name, I pray. It is done. God has touched you, healed you, delivered you. What you do now, you do what you are not able to do before. You are healed. I am healed. I am healed. All right, do what you were not able to do before.